Ladies and gentlemen, it's done. After five months, I'm finally done with my expansion. And for people that are new to my channel or people that haven't uh, followed me a long time, uh, this is an expansion to my other game room, which is a converted garage. And so I wanted this game room to be different. You know, there's a lot of people out there and they have a lot of Nintendo themed game rooms and, you know, newer, newer games, you know, Switch, Wii, 3DS, PS4, Xbox One. And, you know, I love playing games on those, but I really wanted to celebrate the classics. The classics, you know, going way back. Atari 2600 um, is a huge part of, of, of my life, and especially collecting video games, I wanted to showcase it. But I also wanted to showcase other classics in here that come, they came around at the same time period. So sit back, I want to show my game room expansion, a place where I'm going to hang out and play games. Let's check it out together. So here it is. Game room complete. I have several thousand games in here, many complete in box, and I wanted to focus on a place where I could play games, a place where I could show my classic video game collection, and just chill, and just hang out, and talk, and you know, not have to be cramped and just uh i love it i love everything about this room i'm you know really really excited about being able to just hang out and play some games so here's something awesome i had to have in my game room and this was a gift i married a good friend of mine jonathan rose and chelsea beck and they gave me this as a gift for doing that their service and it is super awesome and it was a kickstarter and it was a print done of all the lightsaber battles from everything from Rogue One to the original Star Wars. And it just it's awesome. I love it. It's it's got some really cool stuff. I really enjoy this. It's 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 unique and I have to have it in my game room. My favorite movie of all time, Empire Strikes Back. This poster has actually been in every single one of my game rooms going back to the early days of me dating my wife <laughs> when I lived in a in a flat in a in a in a like a single bedroom apartment and it was really cool so this is uh, this poster has weathered many storms and I had to have it in here it's just uh, you know what can I say it's my favorite movie and it's Empire Strikes Back it's classic Vader can't go wrong and it fits the 80s I wanted to show some of my classic computers and classic com consoles that came out in the 80s and I really had specific ones I wanted to show and I don't not all of them are up here but you know I, I did run out of space and I just really wanted to just decorate my top shelves with uh, some of my favorites some of my favorite Pong units some very rare ones and uncommon stuff you know but you know I love all things Pong related I'm always looking for new stuff, and it's just it's tough, you know. And Sears Telegames is kind of my sub collecting that I really enjoy doing, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun over the years collecting this stuff. When it comes to lighting, I do have a dimmer switch, and I can turn it down or up as much as I want, especially for like media. And so that I do have that option and a lot of times the light is off. I love arcade marquees and I've had these in my collection a long time. Uh, the Berserk was actually a gift from Chelsea Beck and Jonathan Rose for my birthday and I wanted to show some classic arcade marquees. I love arcade machines. I wish I had more space. <laughs> and uh, recently I got this. This was at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It was uh, you know 40th year anniversary of the 2600. I'm gonna have a frame, but you know, for, for right now, I just stuck it up on the wall and uh, just wanted to show that. And a futon, you know, fold out couch, and it's small, 
and it fits in here pretty nicely and this is for guests when they want to come stay and they don't want to stay in a children's bed they can crash here this is my working 1974 flim flam it's kind of a four player pong clone knockoff and I did score it locally I did a video with my family talking about it and I'm really excited to have this as a centerpiece in my game collection Considering I'm such a Pong fan, I had to have a Pong arcade machine, and this was affordable. I actually had to take it apart to get it through the entrance, and uh, this is just kind of neat. I, I see myself kind of hanging out with friends here. I have four chairs, just they'll be on the corners, and we just hang out, play some Pong, or, you know, have a beverage and chat, and I'm looking forward to that. So here it is, my classic game collection on this left side. And I have many, many, many favorites that I cherish, that I grew up with. And so first up is I organized the Atari 2600 by Game Company. And there was a lot of different ways of organizing it. That's the way I did it. I used uh, Sterilite Mini Media Crates. I had 200 of them to assemble this shelving unit. And I bolted it to the walls using several 1x4s and it's very secure now if you notice here i have like a cartridge here and that is because i'm missing the box i actually just recently got this box but it's just not here yet and so that's where i would put a boxed copy of this and this is just kind of place holding it that way i had enough space organized out on this shelving unit to show kind of what i'm missing um, i also collect many variations so I have spaces for those, for boxes I still need. And so then, you know, by organized by company, so Activision, and then it went to Apollo, and then it went down to 2600, which I, uh, uh, Atari, and started with the gatefold. I'm missing basic math, that's the only gatefold I'm missing. And then I started with the text label 2600 games, and then, then went to pitcher and etc etc so this is just showing kind of how I organized it again it works really well these mini media crates hold six 2600 games box uh, for people asking about the protectors you, uh, the protectors are retrogameprotection.com and it is they're awesome and so it they have many different types of game protectors there that's what I use I've been using them for years So I just wanted to show that many of these classics, it took many years to get this. This is not something I purchased off eBay. I did have receive some donations, but I would say 90% of this is something that I collected over the years and took a long time to amass this collection. It's not something I just bought and uh, I'm really happy to finalize it. This is some of my pride and joy. These Panda games are very hard to get boxed. And again, this is just an example of a, a crash video game. And one thing I love about these is, like, look at the price sticker. So it's KB, so it's, you know, I keep I keep original price stickers on it. It dates it, it you know, KB Toys, you know, pretty much essentially gone. And, uh, you know, $4.99, it's in really good shape. This is stuff that, you know, eventually I would like to showcase in a museum. And uh, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to take time. Lots of steps that I have to get in place before I can, you know, roll it out. So it's, it's just, you know, something I want to do down the road. I'm going to need more time. And, uh, yeah, something definitely. Sega. Love collecting Sega for a classic Atari. They made some cool stuff. I'm missing... Uh, up and down box which uh, one of these days I'll get it so again I want to show I not only collect 2600 but I collect everything of the time period so moving on to the homebrew stuff I really love collecting homebrew video games um, and I, I, I chose I didn't showcase all my 2600 homebrews but these are the ones I like, you know, Halo, you know, uh, Star Castle, Ixion, that's kind of a cool unreleased uh, Sega game. 
Very neat. Here's some games that I was involved with publishing, you know, Game Panic, Game Panic 3D, Catacombs of Chaos, and A Tour. And uh, just for people asking, those are out of print now. Those aren't won't be made again anytime soon. It's just a lot of work to do uh, homebrew publishing, and I'm I'm kind of tired. <laughs> so here's some other uh, stuff, homebrew stuff, and here's some just loose carts. All sorts of neat stuff. And here it is. Box 5200 collection. Again, had many contributors over the years. And uh, I'm really happy to have it finally together. And, you know, again, piece by piece. Many of these games were purchased over 25 years. And found it various areas of the west coast conventions and you know craigslist scores and all sorts of yard sales flea marts <laughs> it's just it's just neat to see together my 7800 collection with many homebrews i'm a huge fan of the console and uh having a complete in box atari 7800 collection with many variations and uh, it's just neat to see all together. A lot of, a lot of neat stuff. And really happy to finally have it all together in one place. Next up is my ColecoVision collection. And again, collected this over the years. Coleco is a lot harder to find. Uh, it's kind of neat to go up in Canada and, and see it more popular. I guess Coleco up there was a lot more popular than the 2600. And I have several of my ColecoVision games in box. I'm very fortunate to have amassed uh, a decent ColecoVision collection. I'm, I'm far from having, actually not too far from having it all complete. It's, it's some of these games are just really expensive, so I may never have all of them. But it's, it's fun to collect. And have the Super Game module, which is a neat kind of a, uh, homebrew hardware add-on that adds uh, additional capabilities to the original ColecoVision. And last and definitely not least in the far corner here is my Odyssey 2 collection. And I have several homebrews. I have the complete, complete in box. I have just some neat side stuff, including the multi-cart. I have the Ralph Bear signed pinball, both versions. And uh, just just some neat neat seat neat to uh, have this stuff all in one shot. And I know just all the way back goes all the way down. All right, so here it is. My totes. I use those to put all my controllers in. Got an inexpensive 4K TV, and I use various things to hook up nearly 20 consoles to two TVs, one CRT and this TV. I've used some simple HDMI uh, splitters, switchers. My Commodore 64 here, and now it's hooked up to my CRT TV, and I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, so the Commodore 64 is in here. It's awesome. This has been in my collection 20 years. My PS4 Pro, my actually Neo Geo MVS-1C, and it's in a Super Nintendo shell. My TI-99 with a Wico adapter so I can use standard 2600 controllers on it. My backwards compatible 20 gig. My Sega Genesis setup. Recently had my Sega CD go out, so I have my backup unit. It's in really nice shape. It's been complete in box for a long time. Apple IIc, love that thing. Uh, on a side note, this IIc here has been to nearly every PRGE event and playing Morgan Trail. And so it's really cool to have a final resting place here. And I have the Retron 5, Wii, AVS, and N64 with the HDMI out, very cool. I just recently picked up an Xbox One S 
and I love it and it's a great a great 4k media player so that's why that's in here my modded in television I did a video on that and I want to talk about these cards here this was from a long time ago PRGE did a really simple museum and uh, I was a part of that with some consoles and with Chuck Van Pelt and I found these cards and I thought you know what let's just put them in here just kind of need to kind of show the different eras of classic gaming and these eras were something that I came up with and talked about in the class that I taught at Portland Community College so here it is this is uh, the corner of my game room and this is kind of where my classic computers and consoles are as I mentioned before the C64 was here and the VIC-20 is here you can't you gotta have both and I'm a huge fan of the VIC-20 with a uh, a multi-cart in the back a bare bones multi-cart right below it my Vetrex my Tandy Color Computer 3 with a Wico adapter so I can use 2600 controllers on it my 130XE with a multi-cart back there so I can the ultimate 8-bit card it's like essentially the the best multi-cart you could probably have for the computer it's awesome my modified 2600 s video out my modified ColecoVision I have uh, anything it's RGB modded actually but uh, I have it hooked up hooked up uh, just AV cables at the moment and uh, it's amazing as you notice, these are vinyl covers. These are all original vinyl covers, by the way. And so I just got this Odyssey 2 one. It's really cool. And so I'm really happy to have that. And this is a rare uh, for my Odyssey 2. I also have a 2600 adapter. Uh, so I can use a, sorry, a 9-pin adapter so I can use a 2600 controller on it. Pretty uncommon. And, uh, yep, my ColecoVision. I've done uh, several videos before, but let me flip this up. But I have out here, just want to show this. <laughs> I have modified my uh, Clico controllers and I had this done by Yurki on Atari Age. And he straightens the cord of the Clico controllers and adds a ball mod. And it's really cool. It's a really neat mod. It's my 5200, and my 5200 is. Uh, with a multi-cart, it's like essentially brand new, it's just taken out of a box, and it's it's awesome. Huge fan of the Atari XEGS. It was kind of a, you know, essentially a rebranded 8-bit computer sold as a console. It's really bizarre of Atari to do this. I have several of the games sealed and boxed. I don't have them all. I would like to complete this someday. Just some of them are really hard to get, like Karateka. Um, I'm, st I'm still missing Mario Brothers, which is easier to get. Just, <laughs> just have for some reason having a hard time getting it, and uh, some other ones. Summer Games is pretty tough to get, but uh, this is what the loose carts look like. And below this is my tabletops, my Game and Watch tabletops, and I'm really proud of having these, including a Donkey Kong Jr which was a Coleco release. The other three were Game & Watch, but still, uh, same style and stuff, so I put it together. I love the Coleco tabletops. You know, those are just uh, classics. You know, I think a lot of game rooms have these, you know, and I, I love them. Donkey Kong is by far my favorite. And below is my beloved Vetrex Complete Collection. So these are some homebrews here. Yes, that's a complete in box 3D imager. It's in really good shape and it's complete. Um, here's some uncommon homebrews for um, the Vetrex system. War of the Robots is really pretty tough to get. There was this was at a classic gaming expo a long time ago, and you know it was pretty hard to get. This one definitely is rare. And then every Vetrex game complete in box and they're in really good shape. This is kind of an oddball, this bed, bed lamb right here. It's got like a double print here. And uh, it's kind of my oddity. That's if you're wondering why that's there. So, yep. 
Here's uh, complete in box Vetrex collection. And here are a ton, a ton, and I got these at Pack Rat Video Games. And tons and tons of homebrew Vetrex games, including, uh, and this is a uh, separate, and I've done this gentleman's, uh, some of his games. And Dead of Night, very cool Vetrex game. Last and definitely not least is my new media shelf, and it's Atlantic. I got this off uh, Amazon. And what's important to know about this, you must bolt this to the wall. And it's really a thin media shelf. It's kind of flimsy. But once you bolt it to the wall, it's not going anywhere. Up top is my Fairchild Channel F cart collection. I'm missing a couple still. I do have the homebrew of Pac-Man. Kind of cool that they made a homebrew game and uh, put it on actual physical cart. And these are some of the new little mini arcades. You can purchase these at Walmart. Um, my favorite is Qbert. Uh, Centipede's pretty good, and they they just released uh, Joust and Rampage, but they they're not here on the West Coast yet. Here's my box Game and Watch collection, and I'm really proud of kind of uh, collecting. I want to get the set eventually, just it's expensive, all of them are expensive. Very proud of the Crab Grab and the Spitball Sparky, complete in box, with my Donkey Kong variation. There's, and it's just fun, it's fun to collect all these, and it's just, it's expensive, and uh, the, I've just collected these over the years, but they, they, they are not cheap. <laughs> and they're all functional, all the ones I got are functional. And I know I can get little stands for them. I just haven't yet. Again, this is 1.0 version. So I'm just trying to show <laughs> as much as possible. Next up is my Trash 80 cart collection. That's right. I have every, all the first party TRS 80 cart com, color computer cartridges that were games. I have many that are in box. And uh, these are kind of cool. The Predator one's pretty sweet. And got that. And I have several others down there, including Thexter and some of the uh, educational games. But the Thexter and Cart, yeah, it's kind of cool. Sorry to jump around. That's my Atari 8-bit cart collection. And the, the, the rarest thing I got is a prototype, actually. I actually have a couple prototypes in my collection, and this is uh, Star Wars 8-bit, and it's it's kind of hard to see, but this is legit. Corey from Classics and Oddities picked this up for me. I have a couple other prototypes, too, in my collection. That's the one that I currently have. I have a 5200 Mega Mania as well. And below that is my Commodore 64 cart collection. Nothing crazy. I do have a uh, diagnostic dead test, uh, like a like a diagnostic cart. Kind of cool. Nice solder ball. And there's more Commodore 64 cartridges. I like I like collecting classic computer cartridges. Kind of an oddity. More 8-bit Atari 8-bit cartridges. And behind it is a homebrew cartridge called Dungeon Hunt. Very cool that they made that. And something that's not in a lot of collections is TI-99. I love collecting TI-99. Been collecting it a long time. And just continue to collect for it. And would like to collect more of it. So these are some of my rare games. And I have others in box. And this is just what I have to display. I've got a lamp from the uh, West Fest. <laughs> and I have a boxed Miner 2049er. And right below here is RCA Studio 2 complete set. I know there's not bingo there, but I believe bingo wasn't commercially released. So I know there was a complete copy off eBay a while back, but... I don't think it was publicly released. Anyways, multi-cart right there, which is kind of cool. So there you have it. Thank you so much for the positive comments people have made 
on this journey. I've done several videos just showing little increments of progress I've done from the foundation all the way to the completion. It took about five months. Uh, I want to thank Larry who helped me construct this awesome expansion. I want to definitely thank my wife, Sarah, who's been very patient with items in the living room and stuff just taking a long time to come together. And uh, I want to thank uh, James Zimmerman, who uh, really helped me put together uh, some of the shelving units in here. And if you have any questions or comments, comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, again, uh, I built this specifically to be an add-on to my den in my house and in, in a cozy place where I can just chill, sit back, and play some awesome video games. Thank you so much to people around the world who continue to watch my videos. I'm still doing three videos a week. One on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. I typically upload at 8 o'clock in the morning, Pacific Daylight Time. This is the immortal John Hancock. My hat's off to people around the world. They're awesome and beautiful. Take care.